there seems to be a few unbreakable facts of life we are taught at an early age. Of course, some of which relate to living things. We are all taught a few basic facts about animals. They need food, water, shelter, and they're either herbivores, carnivores, or if you're a fancy pants child prodigy, you might have learned about omnivores as well. And to add on to that, we also learn that there is predator and prey. The plant eaters who peacefully live their lives as saintly little creatures, and of course, the meat eaters, who come and kill them all to sustain themselves. And many of you probably are still under the assumption that these elementary rules are the truth. But what about this? Or this? Or this? What is triggering these charming little herbivores to seemingly go haywire and chomp down on some grade A animal? Well, to answer that, we have to observe how the lines can get pretty blurred. Animals do not think like you and I. Okay. So, understanding what goes on in an animal's head is an incredibly complex, highly debated issue that I won't even begin to explain. Sometimes they can show impressive traits. For instance, rats and pigeons can show signs of altruism and caring for others. But even still, they are incredibly different from us on a mental scale. What's right and wrong here is much different than what's in the jungle. For instance, to all animals, food is food. You have no idea when your next meal will be. That's why dogs will get into human food if they have the chance. And when you shout, hey, stop eating that, that's human food, that means nothing. Because to the dog, human food is also dog food. There's no difference. And unless you train them, they'll do it again. Transitioning smoothly from human food is babies. Yes, cannibalism of one's own young is pretty dang common in the animal kingdom, from spiders to hamsters. Moms love their babies until there's no food around, and if they starve and die, then their young will starve and die. So it's better just to cut your losses and commit some good old infanticide. And of course, with all of this talk about food is food, even for herbivores, a good bit of meat is still food. But aren't they supposed to be eating plants though? Didn't anyone tell them they were gentle herbivores? Obviously not, or else you wouldn't have cows eating chicken, hippos gnawing down on crocodiles, and a scary amount of other things, or deer. Deer! Literally the first animal you see when you go to Wikipedia and search up herbivores have been found eating the guts of other deers. Speaking of deer, a study on them proved that incidents of herbivores eating meat are not freak occurrences. The study showed out of 132 songbird nests being monitored, four had hatchlings eaten up by deer, which is a pretty small number, but certainly larger than either you or I expected from a deer of all animals. This proved these deer were seeking out bird nests for the treats. So no matter if it's leafy greens or fleshy flesh, most creatures will try to eat it. So now that we've established that food is food, we must ask, why this food? Herbivores are surrounded by nutrients. There's plants here, here, and here, but this cow is eating a rabbit. Why is that? Of course, in some cases, these herbivores will feed on other animals for a rather specific reason. Going back to deer, they might prey on birds and other small animals in order to get the nutrients needed to grow their big antlers. Another example would probably be the tortoise. Oh, the beloved tortoise. Everyone thinks they're so calm and peaceful, all they must do is eat leaves. But if you've ever been around a tortoise, you know they're a big fan of calcium. They need it in order to grow and maintain their shell, or to produce eggs. But unfortunately, tortoise milk does not exist. So where are they going to get calcium? Well, sometimes they can get this calcium fix from bones. This is no freak occurrence. In many tortoise species, the habit of chipping away and gnawing at bone has been pretty prevalent. There's even this photo, showing a lucky tortoise biting off pieces of a not-so-lucky tortoise. But, on other occasions, herbivores will eat meat for a much more basic reason. Nutritional value. As you know from the food pyramid or uh, food circle, not all foods are equal. Us humans need a balanced diet of diverse nutrients and so do most animals. Protein is of course a pretty important part of your diet. It is after all what allows for the production of more cells throughout your body. And likewise herbivores need these too. 
Now, for numerous reasons, herbivores don't need protein exactly like humans need it. For instance, the reason cows have such large, complex GI tracts is to convert plant matter into protein through the use of gut bacteria, something our body cannot do. But even with their fancy stomachs, cows and other large herbivores still have to spend a crazy amount of time just grazing and grazing, because even these specialists get so little energy from each blade of grass. But now, a smaller animal is packed full of protein and energy. So if the opportunity comes up, why not gulp down a bird whose energy probably equals 20 minutes of constant grazing in order to reach that daily caloric intake? And yeah, most herbivores aren't designed to ingest meat like carnivores are, but who cares? Humans weren't designed to inspect, sell, and love refrigerators, but just look at this guy. I love refrigerators. Just because a creature isn't designed to do something, doesn't mean it can't do that thing. And sometimes having a more diverse palate helps in the long run. Let's say for a short period of time, all the plant matter in an area disappears. The herbivores who are more opportunistic with their food will outlive the herbivores who stick strictly to plants. So in a lot of ways, it is very useful for herbivores to sometimes branch out and eat meat. Herbivores also aren't the only ones jumping the dietary shark here. If you have a cat or dog, you'll notice they sometimes like to eat grass for some reason, even though they fall on the carnivorous side of the spectrum. This also isn't too uncommon in the wild, as large predators will sometimes ingest the grass found in their prey's digestive tracts. The reason for this behavior might be many things, but in domestic pets, it seems to be so they can purge their guts of parasites and bad bacteria. And hey, you know what no animal is built to eat? Rocks. But they still do it. Once more, just like us, animals need minerals, and natural mineral licks are popular for a whole array of creatures. They'll go to a spot in the ground where minerals are particularly common in order to taste those succulent rocks. Certain birds and reptiles also swallow stones whole so they can become gastroliths, which lie undigested in their stomachs and help grind up their food. So, for whatever reason they do it, animals you might not expect have been eating their peers and other weird things for a while, and for a purpose. It's just another way for members of the animal kingdom to serve their duty and survive, by any means necessary. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't already know, I have an Instagram, which will be linked in the description. And I plan on having a big project coming up, posted exclusively there. Uh, this video is certainly maybe my broadest topic yet, uh, on a question I had always wondered myself. Thanks for the abundant sources, videos, and pictures I used to make this, and thank you for watching to the end. See ya!